Hey, you, all, oh, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the south. More specifically, we're in the car, and even more specifically than that, we are at the beginning of another great adventure. Now, as I record this, it is April 2nd, 2024, the day after April Fool's Day, and honestly, I am so glad that April Fool's Day is over. Um, I've, I've talked about this before, not a fan, not a fan of this holiday. I spent all day yesterday getting excited about things and then realizing they were fake. I'm not going to call anyone out, but uh, yeah, something about this holiday it's all about getting people's hopes up and then disappointing them. And at the same time, you get people's hopes up, you disappoint them, and you make them feel stupid. What a wonderful holiday. That is why I do not, I refuse, I do not observe April Fool's Day. And I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it a new tradition. As of uh, next year, I'm going to not read anything on social media, not go on Facebook, Instagram, anything like that until uh, April Fool's Day is done because, man, just what a bummer of a day. And plus, you know, in, in today's modern age, we are already constantly battling misinformation, especially on social media. So much stuff put out there that's just demonstrably false, that tricks us, that fools us. I don't even know why we I don't even know why we need an April Fool's Day because in modern times it's almost like every day is April Fool's Day. Anyways, I will put my grumpy old man side aside for uh for the time being because we are going on another adventure. Gonna spend maybe around a week at home. Um took a few days off here and there. Um did a few days where I didn't upload. And I think that's gonna be probably, probably how I'm gonna handle things. Um, you know, when I'm home, I am going to film, but also when at home, I may take more days off, may, may, may skip more days, just so I can, you know, live my life a little bit, spend time. Um, when I'm on the road, <clears throat> when I'm on the road, I think I'm going to, I'm just thinking out loud here, I think when I'm on the road, I'm gonna, I'm gonna upload pretty regularly, possibly daily while I'm on the road. And um, then at home, maybe slow it down a bit. That's kind of, I think that's kind of the rhythm I'm thinking. Again, always trying to find balance on this channel between uh, my life and the channel. And uh, I think that's I think that's what I'm gonna aim for. I think, you know, we'll, we will be recording videos at home. I will be going over to nearby stuff, going over to Pigeon Forge, going over to Atlanta, Knoxville, um, you know, nearby cities, but, um, you know, I, I'm going to need to, I, I'm going to need, I need more days off. I, I think it's unhealthy to not take days off. So I'm going to, I'm going to take a few days off when, when I am home. I think those are, those are the, when I'm going to aim to take time off. Cause I don't like to take time off while I'm on the road because, um, you know, when I'm paying for hotel rooms, when I'm away from home, I like to, you know, like to, like to be productive, like to get things done and maybe I will save the, the resting for home. But, um, I did, you know, this is 2024. 2024 is the year of the pressed penny on the Carpetbagger channel. Uh, on this last trip I went on this three and a half, uh, three and a half week trip that I just did about a week ago, um, we found a lot of pressed pennies. There's no shortage of pressed pennies out there. I was running low on pennies to smash. So every location I went to had a pressed penny machine. So I've tried to uh, be prepared. I stopped by the bank and I have obtained 500, 500 pennies. We're gonna smash all these pennies into smashed pennies. This may not be enough. I was gonna go for a thousand, but maybe we'll we'll see how long 500 pennies lasts us, and uh, we will go from there. Also, I got forty dollars, forty dollars worth of quarters, as well, to put in the press penny machine. I've got 
Oh, see, this is how I get prepared. I got $100 in ones. These are for like Zoltars and street performers and things like that where you need to have cash. The pennies are to put into the press penny machines to be pressed. The quarters are to operate press penny machines as well as maybe other arcade style machines that I come across. So I am, I am prepared and also if I need to, I can use these roll of quarters to give someone an enhanced knuckle sandwich, roll them up like that. So uh, for, for protection and penny arcades. Uh, so we, we are prepared for this trip. And oh yeah, the reason for this trip, we are going. I'll tell you where we're going. We are, not directly, we're gonna make a few stops before we get there, but we are headed to Buffalo, New York. The goal there is to see the total eclipse of the sun that will be occurring uh, will be occurring next week. Um, you know, Jen is from Buffalo, so there's different places we could go to view the uh, the total eclipse of the sun. But uh, figured Jen, you know, has been away from home for months, so I think we we kind of tie in a way for her to visit visit home visit her hometown as well as enjoy the uh the solar eclipse so um we will be uh be headed in that direction as like i said i'm gonna make it make some stops before then um jen is gonna travel separately she's gonna meet me up in buffalo and uh, where we can enjoy the eclipse together but uh, without further ado, I do believe it is time to get on that long, lonesome road. Now I decided as I was driving along the highway that I was going to swing into the small town of Irwin, Tennessee. And I'm actually really glad that I did. Now this is a town that I've long been fascinated with because of a local legend, a true story uh, that occurred in the early 1900s. And that is the story of Mary the Elephant, Murderous Mary the Elephant. Now, the story goes that there was a circus in town, Sparks Brothers Circus, and um, they hired a temporary elephant trainer, a new, a new, brand new elephant trainer. Did not know anything about elephants, but they hired an elephant trainer by the name of Red, and they put him in charge of one of the elephants, Mary. Now this was in a, in a nearby town. This didn't occur in Irwin. But um, Red, an inexperienced elephant trainer, was apparently aggressive with Mary. He smacked her with his stick, and um, they're doing like a parade. Like the circuses, when they used to come to town, they used to do a parade down the middle of Main Street to kind of get the town amped up that the circus was in town. And Red was walking with Mary in the circus parade, and he was smacking her with his stick. And at some point, Mary, she decided that she had had enough. She grabbed Red, threw him to the ground, placed her foot, her elephant foot on his head, and popped it like a watermelon. We'll see there was children watching this. So the children, very traumatized, watched a man have his head popped by an elephant in what they thought would be a fun circus parade. Now, uh, the circus went on, they performed like everything was usual. And the next stop for the circus was here in Irwin, Tennessee. And the circus, I guess the, the, the story of Mary the Elephant, the murderous elephant, had followed. People of the town were outraged when they showed up with a murderous elephant, and it was decided, the circus decided, that they would have to put Mary down. And um, because of that, they decided to actually make that an added attraction. They would have the circus, Mary would perform in the circus, but after the circus, for an extra charge, you could come watch the execution of Mary the Elephant. Now, as I've traveled across the United States, there is a shockingly 
large amount of public elephant executions that have occurred in the United States. Plenty of elephants that become aggressive, turn on humans, and then are executed for their crimes against those humans. What makes Mary, what makes the Mary story so strange and stand out from these many other elephant executions is the means of execution. They had a railroad wench, tied a chain around it and lifted Mary up by her neck. There's actually a photograph of this happening, although I, I don't recommend people go check it out because it is a, a somewhat graphic photograph, an old timey photograph of an elephant hanging. It's my understanding. The hanging took place right here. This is the current library. As you can see by the building, it is a, um, it is formerly a train station. As you see here, the Colonel J.F. Tony Memorial Library even has a train there on the library sign. And yeah, clearly this was a train station at some point, the train yard right back here. The train track runs right behind. It was said that on this spot here at the library that Mary was executed. And then of course, so she was so heavy that they had to dig a hole, dump her in the hole and bury her here. Now I've heard different stories about where she may be buried. Um, I know uh, several sources said that she is buried here in front of the library, somewhere on these grounds. I guess we don't know the exact location, but um, somewhere here near the library. I've heard a few other possible locations, but um, I think I, th I did do think I came to the conclusion that she was buried here um, at the library. But this over here is what really made me smile. I'm really happy that I stopped by Irwin, and that is we have Mary here in the parking lot, in the parking lot where the real Mary is buried. Actually, I've heard some stories that she may be buried here at this intersection under the under the pavement there, but uh, right near her burial site, we have a statue of Mary, and this is very significant because um, for you know for for almost a hundred years, the town. Did not like talking about this. This was considered to be an, a, a local embarrassment, the town that hung the elephant. But um, in recent years, and since I've been, uh, since I've had my YouTube channel, the town has kind of, kind of uh, changed their tone a bit. They're not proud that they hung Mary, but they are. Uh, they they wanted to, to take a negative and turn it into a positive. So they will have fundraisers where they will make different statues of elephants and place them around town, auction them off, and then give the money to an elephant sanctuary. So the town that hung an elephant has now become an extremely elephant-friendly town. And this here, I was so excited to see this. This is a, uh, this, this replica of Mary here was actually created by Chris Kastner who runs the Backyard Terror Dinosaur Park, which is not too far from here. He created this replica of Mary. Now previously, this wasn't on public display. They would bring this out for parades or special occasions, but I drove into town here just to see what was going on in Irwin and saw that this had been placed permanently. I don't know permanently, but for now, it is placed out in the public. So how far we've come how far we've come from the town that hung the elephant here at the train station to a town having some regrets for their action. And now a monument stands to Mary herself. You see Mary here, she's got a, uh, a tutu on, some leg warmers, and uh, holding the, the staff here. I don't know. I first I pulled up, I thought this might still be decorated for Valentine's Day. Now I'm not so sure. Maybe this is just her spring outfit. I don't know if they change Mary's outfit over the course of the year, but uh, it's just amazing. Amazing that she has become an icon here in uh, in Irwin. And uh, see some yard, yarn bombing on these trees here out in front of the library, you know, where someone secretly at night knits a sweater for a tree. Oh, and look at this. In the tree, there is a little, little elephant. The town 
that hung an elephant is the town now that loves elephants. And over here on this mural for Irwin, none other than Bigfoot himself. It's kind of a shadowy Bigfoot there with some uh, glowing eyes as he looks out onto the beautiful nature here in Irwin. So Irwin, Tennessee, for putting up the Statue of Mary, I'd say that is a big win for Irwin. Oh, as we walk along here, see another little knit elephant. Irwin, Tennessee, apparently not only a place that loves elephants, but also a place that loves cats. A little feral cat village here. Have it uh, set up some warm blankets, some food out there to feed the uh, the feral cats. Even a little cat church there for uh, for those cats that are religious. We've stopped off in Gray, Tennessee, and we will be adhering to the EM rule. Stopping off here at the Gray Fossil Site and Museum. This is actually an active fossil dig site here in Tennessee. And they have a museum that accompanies, accompanies the dig site as well. So I figured uh, since we were passing by, we'd stop and check it out. And I do really like this fountain here full of uh, prehistoric creatures. You can see that elephant-like creature there. Different uh, animals. And this big alligator, this big brick alligator here, hanging out with some turtles. Some sort of cave bear there. And uh, another little alligator, another brick gator. And as we enter here, we are immediately faced with this giant skeleton of a short-faced bear. And as you can see from this skeleton here, the, uh, the face is the only short part of this bear. Absolutely towering prehistoric monstrosity here. Now they do have a teeny tiny little local black bear. This is what we have currently in, uh, in this area. And you can see the black bear just comes up to the to the crotch of the massive short-faced bear there. If you look at the, the black bear, you can see he's got some scars there on his face. Maybe uh, maybe the short-faced bear took a, took a swipe at him. See some more fossils and bones here in these display cases. There's our short-faced bear. Then over here, we have the dire wolf, which is pretty terrifying. Compare the dire wolf there to a Boston Terrier skull. Boston Terriers are, uh, you know, they're tough little guys, but uh, not nearly as terrifying as a dire wolf. Here's some mammoth parts. You can see a mammoth molar there, a mammoth tooth. And there is a mammoth rib. Imagine eating a big, big slab of mammoth ribs covered in barbecue sauce. This kind of explains what's going on here at the, uh, the, the fossil site. Shows that there's a watering hole here that actually collapsed, caused a sinkhole, collapsed, and uh, collected all these, uh, all these animals in the sinkhole. You can get a look at the uh, watering hole here. You can see these poor unfortunate skeletons here being chased by a vicious Tennessee alligator. Yeah, over here, this is the skeleton of an extinct type of rhinoceros. Here are some mastodon bones found here at the fossil site. It's the lower jaw of mastodon. You can see the two teeth 
poking out there, the bottom of the jaw, the tusks there underneath the jaw. Here's a look at modern Tennessee where we have, uh, we have deer instead of uh, rhinoceroses and alligators. Here we can dig for uh, different extinct animal parts. Let's see uh, what we can find here. Okay, some sort of some sort of jawbone. Oh, look at the. I think that might be a that might be a mammoth jaw. Let's uh, check the chart here. Okay, no, that wasn't a mammoth jaw. That was a rhino, a rhino jaw. Up here on the second floor, we can see some paleontologists at work. Slow down, paleontologists at work. Sometimes you got to slow down and smell the paleontologists. See what's going on here in the lab. Okay. Yeah, you can see a lot of work going on back here. But they have like a a uh, a mastodon or mammoth skull there. You can see this kind of like a plastic skull, maybe a 3D printed skull. And you can see little bits of actual bone being reattached, kind of like putting it together like a big puzzle on that uh, 3D printed skull. Looking in here, you can see all the different fossils laid out. You can see a couple of paleontologists back there, hard at work. And uh, up front, this is a skull apparently they're currently working on. This is Papa. See the different pieces of the skull there. Big, uh, big piece of the jawbone back there. Papa, the elderly extinct rhinoceros. It's once he. Once Papa gets all put together, he will look something like this. These doors back here will open up to the actual fossil site. Let's uh, take a peek. There's a map of the dig site. And yeah, that's the big sinkhole right over there, where uh, all the prehistoric animals fell in and uh, were preserved for future generations to enjoy. And I believe it is time for the first penny press of this road trip. The shiny penny in there. And then one more quarter. shiny mammoth penny from the gray fossil site. And we have entered the state of Virginia, and one thing I do like to check out in different states is the Welcome Centers. We're here at the Virginia Welcome Center. Now, a lot of times I end up passing the Welcome Centers at night where their Welcome Center portion is closed. But we've actually made it during operating hours, so let's check out the Virginia Welcome Center. See, when you come in here, they have a bunch of brochures, whatnot, welcoming you to Virginia and all the different things to do in Virginia. So here's some more fossils. <laughs> There's a, mast a mastodon tooth there. Oh, okay, this is um, some salt from Saltville, Virginia. I've actually been to Saltville, Virginia. There actually is a salt museum there. Some other things in this little miniature. So civil, civil War artifacts there, different bullets. And uh, an advertisement for the Museum of Middle Appalachians. That's in Saltville. So, yeah, I think I have... Okay, I know I went to the museum in Saltville. That must be 
I think I have been to the Museum of Middle Appalachians in Saltville, Virginia. Oh, some Native American artifacts there. And some arrowheads. Over here there is a very dirty bicycle with some uh, brochures on bicycling in Virginia. And you also see those iconic bumper stickers there, the Virginia is for lovers sticker. Have the uh, little country music section over here because uh, Bristol, Virginia, the home of country music. It says which Bristol session song was recorded by the grunge band Nirvana. Let me see what is it in the pines? Where did you sleep last night? I it's uh it's, I was actually right. That's <laughs> Where did you sleep last night? Also called In the Pines is a traditional um, you know, folk song in Appalachia. But uh, Nirvana, I guess the Nirvana version was called Where Did You Sleep Last Night? But I've also heard it called In the Pines. Which instrument was once called the Devil's Box? I'm going to say the guitar. The guitar, right? Oh no. I should have known. It's the, the fiddle. I really should have got that because we all know the Devil himself is a fiddle player. He plays a fiddle made of gold. Do you know where the banjo comes from? I believe that banjo is an, originally an African instrument. Yep, banjo is an African American instrument. The instrument was noted early in Thomas Jefferson, his diaries, but he called it the banjar. Yeah, the birthplace of Country Music Museum is in Bristol, and I've never had a chance to check that out. I've always been in, in too much of a hurry, and I don't think we have time to stop today. Where I'm starting to run a little little behind. So we'll have to come back to Bristol some other time to check that out. A little country music corner here where you can pose with some instruments. Got a guitar there, and a banjo on the wall, even a little ukulele. grab one of the uh, iconic Virginia is for lovers stickers so I would actually rank the Virginia Welcome Center pretty high on the list of welcome centers of course we all know Florida the gold standard for welcome centers giving you free orange juice free grapefruit juice here you got some free stickers which are pretty cool and uh, yeah definitely some fun little museum displays inside you know some some welcome centers are just you know just sacks of brochures but uh, this one has some character I like it I used to think the motto of Virginia was the strangest state motto Virginia is for lovers but it actually means something slightly different than I thought it it doesn't mean like Virginia is the state for people that have adult relations with each other. Virginia is for lovers was from an old commercial that they uh, they ran in Virginia and kind of the idea was they said Virginia is for lovers of nature, lovers of food, lovers of music. So people that love things come to Virginia because I guess theoretically Virginia provides all these amazing things for those that love those things. Over here, there's a big pile of mulch with the uh, Virginia seal on it. Now, Virginia's motto, I did not know this. First of all, I guess we'll just address that Virginia has nudity, has nudity in, in their seal. Um, also has some, apparently a murder, a, a murder there of some sort. Um, it says, apparently state motto, Sick Semper Tyrannus 
which is what uh, what it's what John Wilkes Booth yelled after he after he shot Abraham Lincoln. I think it means uh, I think it means death to tyrants. So I guess this is a tyrant here. There's his crown. It looks like maybe this is like liberty. She has murdered the tyrant there. Looks like she has a chainsaw and uh, she used the chainsaw to kill the tyrant. You think they would have changed that after, you know, the whole Lincoln murder thing. Maybe change it to something slightly different. We have stopped here in rural Retreat, Virginia, here at the Mountain View Cemetery, to pay our respects to this man right here, Charles Taylor Pepper, known professionally as Dr. Charles Taylor Pepper. Dr. Pepper, yes, the namesake for the popular soda, Dr. Pepper. Now he did not invent the drink Dr. Pepper. That was invented by a pharmacist named Wade Morrison in Waco, Texas. I've actually been to the Dr. Pepper Museum that is in Waco, Texas, a very, very nice museum about all things Dr. Pepper. But it said that uh, Wade Morrison actually grew up in this area, only about an hour away from rural retreat. And it is said that he was the apprentice of Dr. Pepper, who was a pharmacist, also a surgeon. And uh, when he created his new beverage, Dr. Pepper, it is said that Dr. Pepper, one of the interesting things about Dr. Pepper is that it was, it was created by a pharmacist. It was designed to actually taste like a pharmacy smells. That's the definition they give in the Dr. Pepper Museum, that Dr. Pepper is supposed to taste how a pharmacy smells. Now, that sounds odd by modern standards, as pharmacies may, may smell sterile these days. But um, back then, pharmacies kept all sorts of herbs and different things in the pharmacy that created a very alluring smell. So when, uh, when it was created in Waco, Texas, they were wanting to, wanting to name it a catchy name. And it was at the time, it was, it was in vogue to put doctor at the front of the name. It would imply that it was healthy or somehow health food. So uh, Wade Anderson thought back to the man that had helped him, that, had, that he had worked under, and decided that it was a fitting name to call it Dr. Pepper. Now, if we can only find the grave of Mr. Pibb. And it probably is worth mentioning the uh, cemetery up here, Mountain View Cemetery, is an appropriate name. It's actually a very gorgeous view. You can see the mountain range out there and look down on the little town of Rural Retreat. A very peaceful resting area here. here in Flatwoods, West Virginia to uh, fuel up the car, get a little bit of gas. Um, I didn't mean to stop here in Flatwoods. I just stopped because I needed gas and I realized I'm wearing a Flatwoods Monster t-shirt. In addition, I have the Flatwoods Monster pin on my hat. So I look like a total super fan here showing up in Flatwoods with the Flatwoods Monster shirt and the Flatwoods Monster pin. This is like the equivalent, I think, of like showing up at a concert wearing the uh, wearing the, the concert T-shirt. That's what Jen told me. Jen, um, you know, she, she's a big fan of going to live music, live music concerts, and she said it is a is a faux pas to wear the same band to 
the show that you're going to. And I actually kind of adhere to that rule. I don't go to concerts, but um, you know, when I'm picking out my shirt for the day, I actually try to pick something that is different from what I'm doing, a different attraction. I try to never wear a shirt to the like the, the, that fits in with the attraction that I'm going to, if that makes sense. If I'm going to like Disney, I definitely try not to wear a Disney shirt. I don't know, I just I kind of like to, to mix things up. I know my friend Adam the Woo likes to wear an appropriate t-shirt like I'm wearing right now, but I guess I I tend to wear in inappropriate t-shirts, not inappropriate t-shirts, I think um let's just say non non-appropriate t-shirts. And we have landed. We are here. These pictures, are these pictures? I don't know what these pictures are. Maybe just the Pennsylvania farmland. We have landed outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm gonna be here for a few days. I've got something uh, scheduled tomorrow that may be fun. We'll just wait and see. Um, and then uh, I'm going to be here for a few days, so if you guys have any ideas of things that you'd like, I have a few thoughts of things I may want to do here in the Pittsburgh area, but um, I'd love some feedback from you guys if you know anything here in the Pittsburgh area that you would like to see me film, that you would like to see me include in one of these videos, just leave a comment down there in the comment section. I'll be hanging out here in Pittsburgh for a few days. Then I'll be meeting up with Jen and we'll be headed up to the Buffalo, New York area where hopefully, fingers crossed, the weather, the crowds, you don't know what's going to happen. But we're going to try to view the total eclipse of the sun. But uh, thank you for watching this video today. If you do like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country. I film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses and other fun, I just dropped the camera there, other fun stuff. If uh, you'd like to help uh, support the channel other ways, consider contributing to Patreon, $3 or more. Get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop and doing personalized messages on Cameo. If you're interested in any of that, check the description of the video below. All those things help keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.